everybody and welcome to Hair by Amber's YouTube channel. This is my first actual video on this channel so I'm quite excited and I hope you guys like what you see. Today we're going to do a custom wig. I've made one for my client before. Today I'm making two custom wigs. Um, so it should be pretty cool to do today. Um, one is going to have color. One is going to be with just regular virgin hair. But what's going to be cool is that throughout the process, I'm going to try to give you a couple facts on what to do, what not to do um, when you're making a lace closure custom wig. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get to it. Need a mannequin head. Styrofoam mannequin head at that. I've tried to use a regular mannequin head. Like, it does not work. It cannot happen. So you have to use a styrofoam mannequin head. Because when you're going through with the needle, you need something that kind of if it goes through or if it hits the styrofoam, it will pull out. It won't get messed up or it won't uh, tear up the net um, or bunch up the net while you're sewing. So the styrofoam is easier to use when sewing a custom wig together. For this mannequin head, this is like a larger size head. This is like a 22 uh, half inch to 23 circumference head. Um, so we're not gonna use this one but we are going to use my smaller head that's for both my clients today both have kind of like small heads um this one in particular i changed the measurements on because my client's head both of them are about in the 21 inch to 22 circumference head so range the first so client, um she has color in her lace and in her weave that we did already did it pre-did it um maybe a week or so ago lace closure I have it all pinned down. As you see, my net's already all secure. I have pins. These are sewing pins. You can get these Walmart, Hobby Lobby, um, Hancock Fabrics, is that what it's called? And uh, Michaels, maybe? Maybe. I'm not like a Hobby Lobby Walmart girl. I mean, these are basic. You can find these anywhere. But I pinned it all through. I just want to make sure that this net is secure. So, for example, when I'm pulling it, you see it's not moving. It's staying intact, which is what you need. Anything else will slide. And that's another thing why you use styrofoam. Because if you're using a regular mannequin head, which is made of like hard plastic, you can't pin needles into it. So, duh. Obviously, this is why you need styrofoam. So, put it on. She's ready to go. Um, even with my weaves, I like to start with applying the lace closure first. That's just me. Um, everyone's different. It's not to say that my technique is the best technique or the right technique, but that's just how I roll. So I got my hair out the way so I can clearly see my closure better. So also, you got all that done the pinning everything secure so the net won't move and with this net i wish i would have shown okay well it is no it's not this one it is a stretch weaving cap i like this one because one it stretches two the netting is really close together as you kind of see you can't really see into the scalp if you want to say um i feel like when you're sewing especially for like a wig you want the holes to be pretty close together so it's just everything is tight and secure and you know you know if you could wash you can reuse it multiple times and not worry about um the thread and all that kind of just loosening up and then you don't have the wig anymore so i like that plus two with this one this has adjustable straps and these let me see and what's cool about this is that it actually has a hook to it at the very bottom. Let me see. I don't know if you see that hook. I think that's pretty cool. So of course, you know, you can pin it closer, move it so it's tighter up to the head. So my clients can really feel secure when they're wearing the wig. They don't feel like it's like, okay, this is a wig, you know, it's loose. I got to pin it down, do all this extra stuff. It should be pretty secure um, for them. Plus two, since it's their size for their head, it should already feel even more secure. Next right. thing is 
threading or thread. I prefer to use nylon thread. Um, nylon thread is just stronger, it's gonna pull tighter, get everything locked together. Uh, when you wash, like cotton um, thread, cotton actually swells up when you wet it and all stuff like that. So it's not going to stay tight. Um, it won't last longer for you. So if you're still using cotton thread, you need to switch it up because a lot of people, or you should be using nylon. Cotton is real throwback. Now let's start on my corners. So I'm gonna do my corners. And then once I get done my corners, I'll get back to you. And while I'm saying my corners, I'm gonna start in the front. One, two, right here. This corner. I went ahead and I got my closure on there. It's all nice and secure. See that the lace, you can barely see where the lace is right now, but it's on there, onto the wig itself. Nice and secure. Can't see where the hairline really starts, which is perfect. All this is on there. See it ain't moving. You don't see nothing poking or bulging or the seam is tight. I've been licensed for almost 10 years, so. I should have my sewing technique. Uh, so yeah. lace closure's on. Done. Now the more elaborate part, I guess you say. I don't really use a whole bunch of bundles, whether weaving or uh, well, like doing a sewing or doing a custom wig, unless my client insists that they have a whole bunch of hair in their head. But on another video. Uh, I'll explain the different textures of hair and how you can get a fuller look uh, just depending on the type of hair that you purchase. Because you don't have to put three, four, five, six, seven, eight different bundles in your head to make it big and full. Trust me. But anyway, so this is a bundle that I colored. It was, you know, virgin hair. This has like highlights in it. I don't know if you can really tell. But, you know, it's mainly color and you have a little bit of dark in there. This, and then this is all what color is like a warm brown. It's really, really warm. It's low. It's like a, what color is this? Like a level five or something like that. So yeah, so we're gonna kind of alternate between both bundles to make it a balanced look. And then in the lace closure, you probably didn't see it, but it has a couple like uh, highlights in the lace closure because this particular client, she loves color, but uh, she is a RN and she, you know, wants to still look appropriate when handling her clients and you know not too flashy looking so we're gonna do this now in the very back of this right here this is like the hairline or whatever the nape of the neck you want to call it but here um you could do a track right here um on a previous client when i made the custom wig for her i didn't sew a track right here and she had a bob in her head, uh for her wig and it worked out fine. Her bob was pretty high on her neck. You didn't see anything. She has no complaints. I haven't had any complaints about it. So you don't have to sew something at the very bottom. But if you want to, if you feel like you want to have just more coverage or just to be on the safe side, you can always sew something right at the bottom. But it needs to be right in this area. Not right here where the pins are, but right in this middle part. So before the adjustable straps and after this where the ball pin, ball point uh, pins are so right in this middle range and then your next track should start right here so i'm gonna show you how i start off and then i'll be back and i'll show you i guess maybe halfway and then we'll cut again and finish the look off how about that so so i measure my track on my mannequin head and the first track, like I said, since she's not doing long or whatever, and she's bobbing it, I'm, I'll, I'll just do a track down there just so you guys can kind of see, like, okay, I see why she did that or why that could kind of be beneficial to have that track at the very, very bottom part. So that's going to be a pretty short track. So measure it now. Uh, of course, you need scissors, which I don't know, I have some 
scissors. So I'm just gonna use my crafted scissors. Of course, when you're cutting the hair into a style, you don't want to use your crafting scissors if you're a crafter. You want to use shears. Do that. I'm going to show you guys. I'm turn this around. So, as you see, it's above where the ball point pins are, but it's below where the straps are, right there. So, see how that kind of covers that weird kind of strip? So, if you're kind of funny about that, then I'll just say go ahead and make that little small first track right there and then your next track should be right above it. So I'll sew that on. And then I'm gonna, like I said, do the one above the adjustable straps and then we'll be back. Alright, so this is the result. This is with the uh, colored version hair that I had. Her lace closure. Laid to perfection. Look how long it is. And I named her Tina. I feel like it's Tina hair. She looks amazing. Two bundles with the lace closure. Finished product. And then also my other client, I didn't talk about her earlier, but um, she just wanted virgin hair, dark hair, same kind of wavy hair, lace closures on that. Zoom, zoom up on it. See the baby hair? Roxy. So yeah, turned out pretty good if I say so myself. Um, I may post some pictures of the actual clients with the wig on on my Instagram, Hair by Amorous. But other than that, it went smooth. Thanks for tuning in! To my client here, she's wearing it. She's going out tonight as a gala. See the part bend down a little bit. There you go. Nice and laid. Curled up the hair. This is my Tina wig that I made. Turn around. No gaps, no humps. Looking gorgeous, darling.